welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got ICM's 148 scale MiG-25 PD. This is the Interceptor fighter version, uh, not the actual recon version that was recently reboxed by Ravel. Now Ravel did a great job because they put in the correct nose and front end to it, so it had a small upgrade before they released it, which is really nice. This one though, apparently, is perfect straight out of the box. And I actually have been waiting for this kit now for a few months since I realized they were gonna be releasing it. Originally I was gonna do a full build video of the actual uh, recon version but then I heard about this so if you're gonna do it we're gonna do this one and actually starting tomorrow I'm gonna to be building this kit on the Florian model site so down in the box you can see lovely box art very very nice that typical sort of Russian that gray color that weathers in so beautifully and everything else like that with a fantastic sky effect and everything showing off in its natural environment as in flying around in the clouds okay so we got the kit down in there then on here Having a bit of a run round, we've got some side profiles uh, showing it as being blue 56 uh, up on the end, which actually is this way. Kit number 48903. And then down in here, we've obviously got a thing about it. Uh, basically, I'm saying it was designed late on in the 60s uh, to really be a high end interceptor. Uh, to try and take out some of the faster uh, targets, uh, things like that. Notably, uh, obviously, uh, went sold off later to places like Iraq, Syria, Libya, and countries like that as well. Right, the box, I've noticed, is sealed. Uh, if only I had a knife. Looks like I'm missing a knife. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to clip into these. Lots of little sticky tabs. So... On the back. There we go. So, hopefully, this is going to allow me in. ICM do this to me every single time, I'm trying to get into it without destroying the box because it's actually a box within a box. If I can get this out, it's being funny. Okay. And There we go, we're in. Phew. That was easy. Okay, so box within a box. And there we get to the good bit. Thought we were never gonna get in. Okay, so down in here we have lovely big bag. Got the back to see, and we've got our instructions so, okay so we've got the usual icm call out of tamia and Ravel paints uh pretty much standard colors right the way through on this one quite explanatory um call outs usual things you might imagine parts call out for this one so we know it is basically a new tool it's got a new front end and all the rest of it. it's a couple down here you won't use uh things like the instrument panel we're not going to be using and stuff like that but generally everything else is standard mig 25 land so we've got all of those okay so starting off here in the actual cockpit Starting on the side walls and the side consoles, things like that being fitted down into there, into that sort of forward edge section. Uh, I'd say it's multiple part of this particular kit, putting that one in. Then we've got some bulk heads, and then unfortunately you have to sort of build the wheel well around the gear. Uh, and then do it. It's a little bit awkward the way it is. It's not your standard push fit. There is a way you could just pop this in afterwards, which is something I'll be looking at trying to do when I put it together. Okay, got a little bit of a shim, uh, completing off the nose well system in there, and then that one being fitted into the forward fuselage like that. The uh, floor, so we've got some pedals going down on there. We've got the bottom half of the ejector seat, ejection handle being fitted down on there. And then obviously we've got a decal system, which is gonna fit on the front for the actual instrument panel. And then that bottom part of the ejector seat being fitted on, and the instrument panel being fitted in so again it's sort of a two-part ejector seat system on this okay then we're looking around on here so we've actually got that entire uh, cockpit tub being slid in on the side then you work on the other half of the seat then doing the other half of the instrument panel being those fitted in a couple of bulkheads being fitted down into that one and then obviously two halves together and then we've got the first major framework of the actual aircraft this is what the wings are going to attach to but more importantly the intakes and the side fuselage so forward fuselage being fitted down onto that one then we've got those big old intakes being fitted down in those and those being fitted onto the side completing the sort of sub section of the forward area full length intakes down being fitted down in there with the first stage compression blades being put in down at the bottom here 
and then over on this side we've actually got some lights uh, for the underside being fitted a couple of lumps and bumps being fitted onto that one and then we've got the actual main gear uh, wells being put together those being fitted in and then that entire forward section with those intakes being dropped down onto the main fuselage area main gear going together second big framework being put in there as well and then gear being fitted in on to those then we've got the side parts going in both sides of those being fitted down onto there and then the tail planes obviously all being put together and then it's back to the engines so the actual engine setup for the actual nozzles uh, afterburner rings being fitted down into those and then the actual petals for the engines being fitted right the way through interesting about this area i must admit it's uh, very much multi-part be interesting to see how well that all goes together Okay, then on the other side we've got the top half of the fuselage going down there, those huge en engines being fitted into the rear, and then we've got the tail planes and the tops of the intakes being fitted in, exactly the same for the other side. Okay, <clears throat> stinger being put in the tail system, so that one's going down in there, which would be the ECM and all things like that in there. And then we've got the wings laminated together, and then we've got separate flaps and ailerons as well. And then we've got a wing fence system uh, being fitted down on the top of those. And then interesting, this old fashioned pushed fit for the wings. So making sure you've got the actual alignment right on those. It's not the usual one piece sort of SU-27 format. These are in separate. Exactly the same for the other side. Okay, not forgetting the old important nose weight being fitted in the nose, otherwise you are going to end up with a tail sitter, so don't forget to pop that in, and then that new nose being fitted down onto the actual cockpit area, and then wheel wells all being fitted in both sides, we've got tyres being fitted onto those as well, and wheels being attached. That giant slip tank that fits so far down the back as well, you can see that one's being fitted down in there. And then we've got a full weapons fit, different types of uh, warheads and seekers down on there as well for the main missiles. Okay, and those being fitted down onto that one. Instrument panel, uh, we've got the top cover going down in there, then the front windscreen being fitted on, and then obviously cockpit open or closed. And then you end up, hopefully, with that beastie. Okay, looking absolutely fantastic. All right, so sounds quite simple. I think it's gonna be a little bit more work than that. Decals, so zillions of little uh, placards, uh, warning stencil data, all of those being fitted on just like that. And then we've got markings down in here as well for the Russian one from around about 1989. Okay, and then on the back side up here, we've got an Iraqi one, and then we've actually got a Libyan uh, MiG as well down on there. So very, very nice indeed. Okay, so next up we've got the decals which are, yeah, mediocre. I wouldn't say they're the best ones I've ever seen, but perfectly practical for those ones. No problem with those at all. So the red stars are nice and bright. And then obviously we've got the Libyan and Iraqi markings down in there as well. So that's okay. And then stencil data ones, not exactly the sharpest you're ever gonna see. And they look a little bit dull, shall we say, but I think that's actually quite acceptable. I think we'll get away with that, no problem at all. Okay, sprues. So the plastic is always with ICM, that's softer plastic which I usually, you will hear me say, I don't like it because it's soft and it's, it's, it lends itself to sink marks and it's not nice and things like that. For some reason though, ICM make it work because the detail is very sharp, it's very crisp and it's very rare you'll see any type of sink marks on them. Sometimes you do, like we've got up here, just a tiny little bit of flash on the edge, but generally a couple of swipes of the sanding stick and you're good to go. So it has got a very nice raised and recessed rivet uh, system on this. So the panel lines are raised where they should be raised and they are recessed where they should be recessed. So again, a little bit different. So these ones at the back here on the spine, you can probably see on here these are actually raised whereas other ones down in here for instance down the back end these are all recessed so again always looks a little bit odd but that's how they are so that's what they're recreated on the belly down here they are all recessed as well and as you can see some beautiful details riveting work panel lining access panels the usual things you can imagine all down in there like that okay then on the side here we've got the wheel well sections down in here very nice details right the way through some of these areas all of those and then down in here we've got fantastic beautiful clean no ejection pins or anything else like that for the main gear okay these are the intakes there is a tiny ejector pin in those but a couple of swipes i think it will get rid of those no problem at all and then down in here we've actually got the intake first stage compressor blades being fitted in very nice indeed Okay, those giant tails, again, fantastic work on those. Very, very nice, all recessed details, riveting, and again, lots of detail on there. Again, tiny little bit of flash just down here at the back, couple of swipes that'll take care of that, no problem at all. And then on the upside as well, we've got one piece tail planes, 
they are done and ready to go no problem at all and then down on here we can see we've got the wheel wells nice brake detail down in there raised on the actual tires and then down in here we've got some of the those uh, circuit breakers and various things like that on the side walls for the actual cockpit and then we've got the engines uh, last stage blades at the back okay those being fitted in control surfaces very nice we've got static discharges on the back here uh, we've got the others down on there that's all really very very nice indeed we can see the tire some good detail no weight on wheels unfortunately but um, big old tires nevertheless okay so next up we've got down in here we've got those sides uh, the nose section if you like or the front fuselage shall we say being fitted down into that one again very nice details on all of that you can see it popping through shining through very nice it looks like there's a little bit of sink mark down in here personally i think you're gonna get away as being stressed skin because that's what it looks like what that actually is is on the inside we've actually got the internal details but i think that works because it looks like stressed skin very very nice indeed and then looking around at some of these other areas, so down in here, we have got a couple of ejector pins, things like that going on here, a couple of swipes of the sanding stick just to get rid of those. Okay, but generally all the rest of it, no problems at all with that. Okay, and then over on the nose section, so the good old new nose, again, looking very nice, at all of that, and that nose detail, you can probably see it shining through. Very, very nice indeed. And then we've got the engine with the petals at the rear and stuff like that. We've got the tops of the intakes. Again, some nice details on those. And that all-important stinger down at the back. Again, looking really nice. And things like the angle attack sensors, pitot tubes, things like that, right the way over. The new instrument panel. So obviously that's the new one. I'll be using that one as well. Okay, wings. Again, really very nice. Beautiful, clean, sharp molding on all of those so that's really very very nice indeed okay and we've got the slots obviously for the top slots on here for the fences to go on the top and then obviously the underside ones there for the pylons but again looking very very nice again you maybe just want to make sure you've got these uh, ejector pins just sanded down completely flush so they don't foul anything on the other side that huge slip tank underneath you can see how big that monster absolutely is huge okay and then down on here we've actually got the intake ram doors some nice little bits of detail on those as well so that's pretty good and then the gears and everything else admittedly they're a little bit devoid of detail i thought there might be a little bit more detailed on these gears but it is it's big it's chunky it's russian that's what they are okay the afterburner rings uh for the injections no problem with that at all looking very very nice indeed the two that are missing there to be honest are these two they've come adrift this is the flaps one piece molded flaps looking very nice indeed no problem with those okay and then we've got the wheel well as well which has come out as well and you can see no ejector pins in there clean crisp very nice detail that looked great with a wash on it and here's another little close-up of that wheel again shame it's not weight on wheels but i think you can get away with that quite well with these okay then we've actually got the weapons sprues down here so those big old ones we've got twin launches down here as well for the little i think they're aphids uh, missiles as well and then these big ones down on here with the different types of warheads on them again all beautifully molded no problem at all so we've got a match pair of those and then last up we've got the clear parts so and actually i'm very impressed in the bag they didn't look clear but these are absolutely crystal clear you can probably see we've got zero distortion in that front windscreen very little on it at all if we roll it round on here you can probably see we have no distortion on the main canopy part as well as we move it round very nice these are those lights that are going to go on the bottom as well instrument panel we don't use on this particular aircraft it's got a different instrument panel we saw earlier as well so that is very very nice indeed and there we go it looks to be absolutely fantastic now i've been itching to get my hands on this particular kit for months since i first had it was coming out and i've been waiting for it to turn up and it just so happens we finished my last build last week and i'm going to start this particular build tomorrow so if you want to see how this goes together how i put it together you can follow along on the flory model site for members as always the other thing as well this kit is for sale shameless plug i know 38 pounds from the pm site you can get that from flory model site just pop in there and you can see that particular kit it's only 38 quid with 
five pound postage as well. So in the UK, and obviously we do ship worldwide and everything else at different postage rates. So if you want to grab yourself one of these kits as well and perhaps join in with me, then we'd love you to do that as well. So there we go, that is ICM's brand new 148 scale MiG-25 PD.